What is up you guys? Welcome to today's video. So what I want to talk about today is really interesting. It is gout. What causes it, what it is, where it comes from, how it's connected to a carnivorous diet or not connected to a carnivorous diet. So this is a really interesting thing because it's going to, as you'll see in this video, it's going to loop us into all sorts of interesting things like insulin resistance, fructose, alcohol, meat, uric acid. Let's dig into it. It's really cool. So let's start from the beginning. What is gout? Gout is deposition of uric acid crystals in joints of the body. In the body, uric acid usually circulates as monosodium urate salt. So I could use the terms uric acid and monosodium urate interchangeably. The deposition of monosodium urate or uric acid crystals in joints of the body is gout. And it's what happens when there's a large amount of monosodium urate the monosodium urate crystallizes to form the gout crystals, the gouty tophi. This creates redness, swelling, extreme pain. And if you look at it under a microscope, you can see crystals which refract a certain way under polarized light. Okay, so that's gout. Now, what is the epidemiology around gout? About 20% of the US population in 2008 had increased levels of uric acid, which is defined by greater than six milligrams per deciliter. About 4% of the US population experienced gout. So a large amount of the population has increased uric acid and 4% of the population is actually pretty significant to have gout, especially when it's this morbid, when it's this painful, when it causes this many problems for people. Gout usually happens when the uric acid level in the blood goes above 6.8 milligrams per deciliter. At that level, the uric acid can spontaneously crystallize in joints leading to the gouty tophi. So where does this uric acid come from? This is really interesting. Two thirds of our uric acid comes from endogenous production, meaning that two thirds, the vast majority of uric acid in our bodies comes from breakdown of pieces of us, specifically purines, that is adenine and guanine, which are DNA bases, or the breakdown of ATP into ADP, AMP, and then inosine monophosphate, which becomes uric acid, okay? We'll talk about that. That has to do with fructose, but it's the breakdown of adenosine, guanine, and ATP going to IMP, which make uric acid in the body. That is our endogenous production. That is two thirds, okay? Now, the other one third comes from diet and that is the ingestion of purines, okay? So the majority comes from our own bodies, some of it comes from diet. Now, who gets gout? How does this happen? About 90% of people who have high levels of uric acid are what we would call under excretors, meaning they don't get rid of enough uric acid. And only 10% are overproducers of uric acid. So the vast majority of people have a problem getting rid of uric acid in the kidneys. And we'll talk about things that can affect the rate of uric acid removal in the kidneys later on in this video. It ties into all this really interesting stuff. So in summary, most of the uric acid comes from our body. We can get some from the diet, but the major problem with people with gout is that they're not getting rid of enough uric acid rather than only a small percent of the population who may have polymorphisms, which increase the amount of uric acid they make. Now, do high protein diets increase the amount of uric acid in the blood? This is really the main question around a carnivorous diet, a ketogenic diet, any diet that has a lot of protein in it. I will link to a number of articles which will be background for this video. And as you can see from this snippet, which I have clipped from one of those articles, when people eat a high protein diet, generally the body is able to increase the amount of uric acid excretion and the levels of uric acid may actually go down. So it's probably not an increased consumption of protein or meat in the absence of other factors that creates a problem with rising uric acid levels. So what is causing gout? What is causing gout? Well, I'll tell you this much. Like I just said, it's not the increased consumption of meat. Eating a bunch of meat is not going to raise your uric acid. The body will adjust and you will excrete more and the uric acid level will either stay the same or go down. This is exactly what I've seen on a carnivorous diet for myself. My uric acid eating three plus pounds of meat a day was four milligrams per deciliter. And I have a number of clients that I work with who are also on a carnivorous diet. I've never seen a uric acid above 4.1 milligrams per deciliter and people eating two to four pounds of meat a day. 
That's a ton of purines they're getting from meat. But remember, most of our uric acid comes from the breakdown of endogenous purines or the ATP. So if meat isn't causing gout in people, what is really causing gout? Well, this is what I think is causing gout. And I think there's a lot of literature to support this. I will link to many articles, like I said. I think that the main things that are causing uric acid to rise in people's bodies are insulin resistance, excess fructose consumption, and alcohol consumption. So my hypothesis, what I would posit in this video, is that in the absence of insulin resistance, in the absence of fructose consumption, or excessive fructose consumption, which I would define as anything greater than maybe 15 or 20 grams of fructose a day, would be excessive, or in the absence of alcohol consumption, eating a ton of meat, eating a ton of purines in your diet is not gonna cause uric acid to rise or cause gout. So this is interesting to me because mainstream medicine wants to tell people to stop eating meat or purine-rich foods when they have gout. But what we should really be focusing on for people is what is causing their insulin resistance and how much fructose are they eating and are they consuming alcohol? So let's get to the meat of this, right? Bad pun. Let's get to the real central part of this. What is causing insulin resistance and how does it affect uric acid? Well, as you may not be surprised to learn, insulin resistance creates higher levels of insulin. That is how we define insulin resistance. It's a complex term, but what we know from experiments is that when the level of insulin rises in the human body, our kidneys get less good at excreting uric acid. So rising levels of insulin cause the kidneys to under excrete uric acid. This is probably one of the major problems with uric acid over, um, over accumulation and gout in people who have insulin resistance, is that the kidneys aren't excreting enough because the insulin is too high. Insulin changes the way uric acid is excreted. They have done experiments where they've infused normal glycemic subjects with insulin and seen this, and they've also looked at people who have higher levels of insulin and they can record lower levels of uric acid excretion. So, one of the million dollar questions in this field is what causes insulin resistance? And I don't think anybody fully knows the answer to this, but there are basically two major things which probably contribute. The first is overconsumption of carbohydrates in people who are susceptible, but that doesn't seem to happen in everyone. And I think it's probably a combination of overconsumption of carbohydrates and an inflammatory mechanism, because it does seem that inflammation plays a role in insulin resistance as well, independent of carbohydrate consumption. The combination of those two things is probably fire and gasoline, but I think you need to have some sort of inflammatory mechanism. Tucker Goodrich has talked a lot about this, especially with oxidized omega-6 fatty acids, oxidized seed oils. I'll do a whole other video about that if you guys wanna see that, but it seems that in people who overconsume oxidized omega-6 fatty acids, mainly in seed oils, they have a much worse level of insulin resistance rather than people who avoid those things, and that a lot of people can tolerate carbs okay in the absence of oxidized omega-6 fatty acids and seed oils. So Ben Beekman has also talked about this with ceramides and other oxidized fats, but it seems that there's an inflammatory component to insulin resistance. So limiting consumption of carbohydrates, limiting consumption of seed oils, understanding what your insulin levels are, mainly by checking things like fasting glucose, hemoglobin A1C, fructosamine, and fasting insulin will give you a sense of what your insulin resistance state is. So again, the insulin resistance, higher levels of insulin, lower levels of uric acid excreted, higher levels of uric acid in the blood, crystallization of uric acid, deposition of monosodium urate crystals in the joints, gout, pain in your toe, pain in your knee, excruciating badness, okay? Let's move on to fructose. How does fructose cause this? Well, multiple mechanisms. There are many interesting pathways by which fructose may contribute to insulin resistance. I will link to a great video by Robert Lustig, who's an MD, who's talked a lot about this. So look for that link in the description or here in the video. You can watch his video about fructose and insulin resistance. And also in this video, he will illustrate how fructose, when it moves into the cell through the GLUT5 transporter, is then phosphorylated using up phosphate groups from ATP. So there's a lot of phosphate groups that are used up in the processing of fructose when it moves into a cell. The ATP goes to ADP, goes to AMP, that's adenosine diphosphate, adenosine monophosphate, and then it's converted to inosine monophosphate, which gets converted to uric acid. So what we think is happening there is that when there's a lot of fructose coming into cells, you're using up ATP, you're generating inosine monophosphate, which is broken down into uric acid. So fructose is directly causing increased uric acid and he will also illustrate there are mechanisms by which fructose probably creates insulin resistance on its own. So 
you're not only increasing uric acid through the production of inosine monophosphate by using up ATP to process fructose, you're also creating insulin resistance, which will decrease the amount of uric acid that you are excreting. All right, so double whammy there, insulin resistance, fructose. The third one is alcohol. Anyone who knows someone with gout or has gout will tell you that alcohol will trigger their symptoms. And the simple answer here is that ethanol is a poison, it's widely used in our society, and it probably works through also the same mechanism, decreasing renal urate, uric acid excretion. So what have we seen? Everything that's gonna increase uric acid in the body is gonna decrease uric acid excretion. This is consistent with what I was saying earlier that 90% of people who have problems with gout are under excretors for one of these reasons, insulin resistance, fructose, alcohol consumption. So if you know someone with gout or you have gout and you wanna fix it or you wanna improve it, it's much more about understanding where the insulin resistance is coming from, how much fructose you're eating, are you drinking alcohol, and improving those things than it is about decreasing your meat consumption. In the setting of insulin resistance, fructose and alcohol, if you eat more meat, you could certainly create more of a purine load, which will lead to uric acid and you won't be able to excrete it. But meat is not the culprit. It's insulin resistance, fructose, and alcohol. This is again, something that's well documented in the literature, but not talked about a lot in mainstream traditional medicine. So what's the take home? You guys know that I'm doing a carnivorous diet. It's interesting to me. And one of the things I always hear is, oh, isn't all that meat gonna cause gout? Like I'm showing you in this video, it's not. It hasn't in me, it hasn't in any of my clients. My uric acid levels were very low. So don't fear meat, even though the purines in meat may increase uric acid a little bit. Like I said, generally with high protein diets, we see the same levels of uric acid or lower in the absence of these other factors. The main culprits, insulin resistance, fructose, alcohol. Those are the things to work on if you have gout or know someone that has gout. And by improving those factors, you will improve your overall health because we know that insulin resistance is linked to all sorts of bad cardiovascular outcomes, et cetera, et cetera, ad nauseum, okay? So hopefully this is helpful. This is kind of a technical one. Let me know if you guys have questions. Again, I'm gonna link to multiple things. I'm gonna link to studies that talk about this. I'm gonna link to the video with Robert Lustig. Take a look at that. Leave me questions and comments. Let me know how you guys are doing with this stuff. Hopefully it's interesting. You can find me on Instagram. I will link to that below. You can find me on Twitter. You can email me directly or you can look me up on my website. But I appreciate you guys watching. I really like delivering this content. It's super interesting for me to be thinking about these issues and what's really causing them and hopefully debunking some of these myths around meat as I'm doing this carnivorous diet or for people who don't even wanna do a carnivorous diet, just the benefits of meat I think are very large and I want people to not be afraid of this. So, all right, you guys, have a good rest of your day. I'll see you soon.